Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. I've decided finally to bite the bullet and talk to you about the best recordings of Schenberg's Gura Leader. Oh, boy. Gura Leader. Okay, here's the, here's the issue. Gura Leader is the most gigantic thing that ever really gets played nowadays with any regularity. And it does get played with some regularity. I've seen it quite a few times. I don't think there is any piece in the entire repertoire that delivers less on its promises. And I mean that with all seriousness. You've got this gargantuan orchestra and massive choirs, like a bunch of them all together. And you, you just look at this assortment of, it makes Mahler's eighth look small. I mean, you know, you just see this enormous crew of people out there. And and you're really looking forward to the unbelievable noise you think it can make. And you've got this cool percussion section with chains rattling and all kinds of crap in it. It's amazing. And then you listen to it and you just go, oh God, it's so boring. I mean, it doesn't have to be boring, but it's usually boring. And there are a couple of reasons why it's usually boring. So we need to talk about the piece a little bit before we go into the recordings. And I have at least 14 of them here to discuss. At least, really 15, if you want to include the Stokowski historical one, which, you know, people swear by, even though it sounds like garbage and you can't hear 90% of the orchestration. It's a wonderful performance if you don't want to hear 90% of the orchestration. So much for Stokowski's historical recording. Next, let's talk about the piece. Here's the deal. First of all, nobody knows what happens. I mean, generally you do. Let me explain to you, or try to explain to you, well, maybe a little bit of explanation about what happens here. Okay, so there was this castle, Gura. It was in Denmark, I think. Yeah, something like that. And there was this king named Voldemar. And Voldemar had a, an affair with Tova, which sort of means dove or something like that. Well, I mean, Taub is dove but in German, but it's, it's, it's all the same thing. Anyway, she's very cute. And he has an affair with her. And, and Queen Dagmar is very annoyed, understandably. And, and uh, you know, it's like the original version of the British National Anthem. You know that one? You know, you know what always happens? It's King George, he stayed out late. He stayed out very late. He was the king. Queen Lizzie paced the floor. The king came home at four. She met him at the door. God save the king. That's the story, in a nutshell, of Guru Leader. You know, so they have this affair. Dagmar gets pissed. She poisons Tova. This upsets Dagmar. He curses the life and the universe and God and all that stuff. And then we get, all that's pretty straightforward, right? And then we get to part three. Oh, boy. Well, in part three, um, as far as I can tell, there's this, this fool named Klaus Narr, Klaus the Fool. And like there's night and there's this ghostly hunt where King, King Valdemar and his retainers go on a, a nocturnal spectral hunt sort of thing. All of which, by the way, is, is a vintage romantic stuff. I mean, you know, there's, there's like, you know, Leonora, you know, that story. It's also Dvorak's The Spectre's Bride. You know, the girl gets kidnapped by the ghost of her dead lover. And, you know, and then he, he wants to, you know, somehow marry her, even though he's dead. And son comes up and he disappears because she prays or something happens. And this is much more pantheistic than that. But the, the royal hunt goes hopping by. And then this narrator comes in who talks about goose geese and... and and I, I, I have no idea what the narrator is talking about. In English, it doesn't matter. It's equally nonsensical. And, and, and then the sun comes up. And the huge chorus comes in and they sing this huge apostrophe to the rising sun and morning and the triumph of love and sunlight and glory and daylight and happiness. And it ends with a big noise. That's Guru Leader. Now, there are several problems with this scenario as Schoenberg worked it out. First of all, 
first of all, uh, the biggest problem is that the entire part one, which is really the longest part, consists of a series of love songs. But it begins with night because the, the, the idea, the conceptual idea is the progress from night to day, which lo looks lovely on paper. But the musical realization is quite unsatisfactory because the entire first part is one big, long day crescendo. And that makes you crazy. I mean, you see this massive, massive bunch of people out there. And, and then all you hear are these two people mooning about love in one droopier song after the other. There's one lively one, when the king calls for his horse. That has a glissando for four harps. You know, whoop, it's really good. And, and I like that part. And, and then, you know, he goes, oh, my horse, my horse, where's my horse? Because these people always sing about their barnyard animals for reasons I've never understood. I mean, let me put it to you this way. I have a very high tolerance for nonsense. You have to be. I mean, when you look at the texts that most composers said, especially operatic texts, I mean, nonsense is the name of the game. But I have a very low tolerance for incomprehensible nonsense, which is what this is. And it's just, it's, 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 silly nonsense. I mean, you know what I mean? So they sing one droopy love song after another. Then there's this passionate interlude. And then there's the song of the wood dove, which is very Wagnerian, you know, because in all of these German romantic things, birds talk. In fact, they never shut up. They keep talking. And, and so they talk and she sings about how Queen Dagmar kills Tova. And that's part one, right? And the song of the wood dove is sometimes excerpted and done separately, which is wonderful. I mean, the thing about Girl Eater is that the more you excerpt it, the better it sounds. It's the complete thing that's such a letdown. So that's number one. Then there's a really short part two, like six minutes or so, where King Valdemar curses God because Tova is dead. We never find out what happens to Queen Dagmar, interestingly, but presumably she's just having a good time while everybody's cursing and spitting and fuming. And then you get to part three, which starts at midnight and proceeds until dawn. And it's got, you know, the fool and the king's men and the, the royal hunt. And, you know, it's also like Le Chasseur Modi by Franck, you know, the accursed huntsman. I can't get past the fact that like Franck's symphonic poem does everything the girl leader does only in 15 minutes. Just go listen to Le Chasseur Modi. And if you like that, you want to hear it stretched out for an hour and 40 minutes, listen to Gura Leader. So then, then, of course, after the hunt happens, then sun starts to come up and with lots of piccolos because there are eight flutes and they all double on piccolos. It's ridiculous. And, and, and then there's the, the Sprechstimme part, you know, that sung speech that Schoenberg sort of invented because he wrote the end of Gura Leader like... 10 years after the beginning of Guru Leader and his style had changed and everyone talks about how his style had changed. Yeah, you don't hear any difference. It doesn't make any difference. And and then after, you know, the, the Sprechstimme narrator chats about gibberish. I mean, it's just gibberish for the next 10 minutes and then the sun comes up and it's over. So that's Guru Leader. And in order to perform this successfully, you need the following. First of all, a conductor who's going to play it fast. I'm not kidding. It needs to move because it's so droopy, especially the first part. Oh, God, it's so droopy. And then it only starts to sort of warm up as you get towards the end. And then you have, and then you need really great soloists in the first part because if you're going to listen to 45 minutes of droopiness, it's, it's like a dozen love songs or however many there are one after another. They alternate. I love you. I love you. I love you more. I love you more than you love me. My love is more loving than your love is more. It, it's, just, it's endless. So if they're going to do that, you need great singers to like theoretically sustain your interest. That's really important. I mean, singing is almost more important than the conducting as long as the conducting is fast enough. And, and so... You know, uh, th that's how it goes. All right. So you need to have a conductor who's going to keep it moving. You need great singers in part one and obviously fabulous recorded sound. So you can hear all of the incredible orchestral effects that are far too few and far between. I mean, you really need to have more stuff going on than fortunately than Schoenberg allows us. 
But, um, and it's all so serious. It's so German. Oh, God, it's so, you know, it just needs to lighten up. But that's okay. So that's, as you can see, I am conflicted when it comes to Girl Leader. And the thing is, the great moments are fabulous. And there, there are incredible, incredible things in it. And it's such a, just a, you know, it's a Titanic you know, and it's like the Titanic, actually, because usually it sinks <laughs> pretty, pretty spectacularly. But it's irresistible. It has this fascination because it's just so excessive. It's so crazy and big and excessive. And of course, given what Schoenberg became later, the, the you know, king of 12 note, dodecaphonic, nasty, atonality, serial composition, everybody wants to love Girl Eater because it's rich and opulent and tonal and melodic. And so you think, oh, gee, well, at least there's Girl Eater. But it's not his best piece. It really isn't. I mean, it's just not. I Give me, give me the atonal Schoenberg any day. And I'm serious about that. I take his piano concerto. I take a survivor from Warsaw. The, I take the five pieces for orchestra over Girl Leader any day. So, uh, you know, that's not to say that a great performance can't be enjoyable. It can be. But the other thing about it is that because there seems to be no limit to what people are willing to record these days, how big, how expensive, how crazy it is, there's a lot of recordings of it. Everybody wants to take a swing at it. You know what I mean? But I think they take a swing at it without sufficient preparation most of the time. I really, really do. I think it just needs to have a lot more care put into it than it usually gets, in my view. I mean, it's just too big and too complicated and too many things could go wrong. So anyway, I saw a performance of Girl Leader. I mean, I saw several, but in fact, one of them I will tell you about when we get to it. But the, when I was in, in college at Johns Hopkins, the Baltimore Symphony decided to take a swing at Girl Leader. And they did the combined Baltimore Symphony and Peabody Conservatory Orchestras. Sergio Comissiona was the conductor. And he was a eh, so-so conductor, you know? And, and I'll never forget. I'm sitting there with my, my fabulous score, which is, you know, a short score of Girl Eater is impossible to read because it's teeny, 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 tiny notes because it's so many staves. But I'm sitting there and we get to this big, there's the big passionate interlude before the song of the wood dove because you get all these, you know, it finally the music starts to heat up after they're all dead, you know, of course. But um, so the song of the wood dove is about to come and this interlude is going and I'll never forget the Baltimore Symphony went right and the Peabody Conservatory Orchestra went left. <laughs> they just they just parted company in the middle of this interlude. And you know what? It hardly made any difference. It's such a such a mess anyway of excess contrapuntal stuff and 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 saturated harmony that essentially as long as you stay somewhere within the key that you're in, it makes almost no difference what the players do. And it was, but you could tell <laughs> that it wasn't going the way it's supposed to. It was fun. It was the best part of the performance. I got to tell you, it really was. I also remember, I think Janet Booksban did, did the Sprecher, did the Sprechstimme. We had a female Sprechstimme for that particular performance. I remember that too. Oh gosh. So let's talk about performances. I already mentioned Stokowski. If you want to hear dimly recorded performances of something that nothing can capture, it's so big and huge and glitzy, what can I tell you? I have that recording. I have the Stokowski recording. I've listened to it just because it exists. I'm never playing it again. So that's Stokowski. The other one that I, I have sitting in a box over up there is Kubelix. And Kubelix is fast enough which is a good thing. It really is. It's a good thing, but it's it's just too small scale. It really is. It just it doesn't have the size. It doesn't have the grandeur. It doesn't have the opulence that the piece really needs. Despite some very good singing, it's just 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 a a a, a letdown, frankly. And that's that's the problem with this piece. You know, it, it can't sound too small, but it also can't sound too big and drag. And, and get too sloppy, which is what happens with many of these performances. So let's talk about the recordings. Now I have like 14 more of them. Can you believe it? It's, it's ridiculous how many there are. But, so I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. 
I have to confess, because until we get to the really great, which there's no point, Robert Kraft on Naxos. There we go. Another one. Slow. Slow and dull. It's that simple. It's just slow and dull. So, so much for that. Pierre Boulez. Slow, dull, and sloppy. <laughs> Surprisingly. This is with the BBC Symphony. This is when Boulez's early days, when his conducting was kind of so-so. I'm not sure he's convinced by the work. I'm really not. It's not a terrible performance. It has some wonderful singers. I mean, let's see who's in this. It was It was like, uh, yeah, let's see. Ah, here we go. Girl leader. Jess Thomas, uh, Martha Nagier, Yvonne Minton. I like Yvonne, Yvonne Minton. Kenneth Bowen, Sigma Nimsgern. Gunter Reich is the narrator. And it's the BBC yeah, Symphony Orchestra with lots of choirs and other people. And I, yeah, it's not that interesting. It just isn't. Sorry, Pierre. And he was a Schoenberg expert, but not tonal melodic Schoenberg. So, so much for Boulez. More recently, Esapekka Salonen with the Philharmonia. Now, you would think he might do that well, but he's a real modern music guy. He also doesn't really get the romantic ethos of the thing. He really doesn't. And, uh, you know, this is, it's live. A lot of these things are live, which means that, that you know, you're, you're, you're at the mercy of contingent circumstances and the acoustic of the room and what the audience is doing. And I, I find this performance to be also, it just lacks impact. The big moments just don't happen the way they're supposed to. And they don't even tell you who the soloists are. I mean, I, rem I can't remember who the soloists are. Let me see. Isn't this fascinating that they don't even bother to tell you who the soloists are? This is on Signum. Uh, oh, here we go. Stig Anderson. Oh, Soylia Zakowski. She's very good. She's a good tova. Uh, Monica Group, Ralph Lucas, Andreas Conrad, and Barbara Sukova is the Sprecher. We have another female Sprecher. And... You know, I suppose if you were there, it was fun. All I can tell you is there was no reason I can determine that this needed to be preserved for posterity. Then we have some, two with the Vienna Philharmonic, all right? Claudio Abbado. Claudio Abbado, he's another one. He doesn't, there's so many, you know, I happen to feel, let me just put it to you this way. I think in my heart of hearts, that when great musicians cannot succeed, then the problem lies in the work. It's the composer's fault, not so much the performers, really. Because, you know, Abbado had many, many qualities. I mean, aside from being kind of micromanaging, and he did he did big stuff. I mean, he did operas and all that stuff. He should have been perfect for Guru Leader. But this is another performance that I think just doesn't have any cumulative impact. And, I mean, it's the Vienna Philharmonic, Siegfried Jerusalem, Sharon Sweet, Mariana Lepovshek. I mean, you got Philip Langridge as Klaus the Fool. But for me, that's why it's on Australian eloquence. It just never got there. Also, one that never got there, Simon Rattles. Believe it or not, Simon Rattle did this with the Vienna, Berlin Philharmonic. Another one. Where you've got this this one sort of let down by the singers actually. You've got Karina Matala as Tova. Karina Matala is a great singer. She is a kunst diva. She does not record well. Her voice is not caught by the microphones well most of the time. I mean, I saw her do Kostelnitschka in Yenifa at the Met, and she was fabulous, fabulous. But you you need to have space between her and 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 the sound that hits you. I guess that gives it a chance to sort of mellow in the intervening distance. And you know, so however smart she is, you don't need to be smart to sing Tova. I mean, Tova's Tova's not an intellectual. <laughs> she really isn't. All she sings about is how much she wants Voldemort. So I mean, you know, what do you need to do that? And then the the Anne Sophie von Otter is the Wood Dove. Also, not quite right for it. And you get Philip Langridge again as Klaus Narr. I guess if you want to put on your resume that you made a career doing Klaus the Jester and Girl Leader, Philip Langridge has got one heck of a resume. Anyway, this is another one that's it's just somehow faded and not very exciting. And now I think we have here some pretty good ones, actually. Um, yeah, these are sort of the better ones, I think. Those are just average. Well, this one I'm not sure about either. Sinopoli. 
Now, Sinopoli has got, let's see what his cast is. I think he's got Alessandra Mark again, you know, who has her her moments. But uh, let's see, girl leader. Oh, there it is. No, I'm sorry, Debbie Voigt as Tova. Not bad. Deborah Voigt, Jennifer Larmore is the Valtal. I like Jennifer Larmore. Uh, Waldemar is Thomas Moser. He does Valdemar a lot, too. He's a Valdemar guy. Uh, and the peasant is Bernd Weichel, and Klaus Starr is Kenneth Regal, at least it's not Philip Langridge. And the Spricker is Klaus Maria Brandauer. And this, of course, is with the, the uh, well, it's, it's the Staatskapelle Dresden, which, you know, I mean, what's not to love? You've got the Staatskapelle Dresden. Now, Sinopoli is also not exactly a speed demon in this work. He really isn't. But one thing Sinopoli had that you have to give him credit for, was a real ear for, like, romantic decadence. He just reveled in romantic decadence. So if you want to hear a really decadent girl eater, Sinopoli is your guy. He loves all of that that rich texture. And, yeah, okay, so it's a little boring, but... But, you know, he makes it sound yummy. He really does. I think it's a beautiful performance. And, 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 he, and he captures the big moments. He really does. In part three, especially, he does. So I give him props for that. So Sinopoli ain't bad. Another sort of underrated one that probably is hard to find nowadays was Inbals on Denon. You know, this, this actually got, I, I think, deserves credit for being an inc the most natural recording in some ways of Girl Leader, because all these things usually are taken from live performances, at least for the most part. And, and you know, this was recorded, it was the Frankfurt Radio Orchestra, you know, this barn of an acoustic, but it's a very natural sounding recording. It really does sound like what the piece sounds like. And if you crank this up, you really have a sonic experience. It's quite marvelous. And the singers are Paul Frey, Elizabeth Connell, Yard Van Ness. I mean, it's a good cast, good, solid cast. So, and it's not too slow. So, in ball, if you can find it, is worth hunting. Here's another one that's not exactly the speed demon area, but I like it. Why? I have a sentimental attachment to it. So this is my sentimental favorite. It's Janos Ferencik on EMI. Now, this was not originally on EMI, at least when I was a kid. When I was a kid, it was on Vox, and it was the only one you could get. It was cheap. And it was in stereo. It's a live recording. The sound is a little faded. It's not the best recorded. It's not the fastest. But you've got some fabulous, fabulous singers. I mean, my goodness. It's it's Alexander Young, Martina Arroyo, one of the great underrated sopranos of the 20th century. I mean, 20th century. I mean, she was a great Verdi soprano. Some people think she was greater than Leontine Price. And, you know, there's a point there, but she didn't make a lot of recordings. So anything that she did is valuable. And she sings quite beautifully. And Janet Baker, Janet Baker does the Song of the Wood Dove. I mean, how could, what could be better than, than a wood dove like Janet Baker and Julius Patsack, who they dug up from the grave to be the Sprecher, you know, or yeah, he's the Sprecher. And uh, let's see, who else have we got? Oh, some people you've never heard of. But, you know, it's the course of Danish radio, the Danish State Radio Symphony and Concert Orchestras combined under Janusz Ferencik. I like this. I just like it. I think it's nice. Not the most exciting, but some fantastic singing. Now we have a couple new ones. I mean, some really new ones that are sort of, sort of, you know, <laughs> what can I tell you? This is, this is Edward Gardner um, in, in Bergen. Uh, the Bergen Philharmonic, and Marcus Stenz with the Gersenich Orchestra of Cologne. Now, this is a, a an SACD, which I don't care about. I won't listen to any of this stuff. The one thing I don't want is to be surrounded by Gura Leader. I want it in stereo, left, right, in front of me, and I'm in the audience. I don't want to hear any of this ambience behind me. Um, these are both lovely performers, very well conducted, very well played, very well recorded. What's going to make it or break it is the singers. You have Barbara Havemann as Tova and Brando Jovanovic as Valdemar, neither of whom are going to win awards. And the same is true here. I mean, you've got, who's, who's this? Alwyn, Alwyn uh, something, Miller. Uh, Alwyn Miller as Tova? Yeah, something like that. And Anna Larson as the Wood Dove. 
and Stuart Skelton is Valdemar. I mean, you know, I, there's the problem with you need real Wagnerian voices to pull this off. Neither of these performances really has those, at least. I mean, they're not bad. Again, they're not bad. People don't do this piece unless they're relatively committed to the cause. And I have to say, the conducting and the playing and the sonics, both from Chandos and Hyperion, are wonderful. And these came out at about the same time. It just goes to show you how demented the record industry is. I mean, two girl eaters at the same time? I mean, they just keep coming, no matter how big or crazy it is. So, uh, you know, again, for sonic considerations, worth hearing. Are they the best girl eaters? No. So, but they're good. Here's one that is a real, a real sleeper that nobody pays any attention to, but they should. This is Zubin Mehta's with the New York Philharmonic. This is with, with Gary Lakes, Ava Martone, and, and Florence Quivar basically. And let's see, John Cheek is the bass, is the peasant, and Klaus Nahr is John Garrison. And the Sprecher is Hans Hotter. Hans Hotter, the Wotan from like, you know, forever, from all those Bayreuth rings. It's nice to have Hans Hotter. Now, this is, I mean, Meta understands this music. He just gets it. It's a fabulously conducted performance, really well played by the New York Philharmonic. It's well recorded by Sony. This is the Newton Classics reissue, where they got it from, I have no idea. And, you know, Eva Marton is, you know, does not have a lovely voice, but she has the right kind of voice for, for Tova. It's a, it's a big Wagnerian voice. And like I said, Tova's not an intellectual. You just need to pour on the voice. And Gary Lakes had his, you know, 15 minutes of fame. He was in good voice here. This is worth considering. It's a lot better than you would think. People dismiss it because it's made up, because it's New York, because that whole period has a certain Paul cast over it. But they rise to the occasion. And you could always count on Meta to deliver the goods in these big romantic blockbuster pieces. Now we come down to the two bottom ones. And you're going to know which one my favorite is, but maybe not for the reasons you think. First of all, the two best are Shai on Decca with a wonderful cast. Let's see who's singing. Siegfried Jerusalem, Susan Dunn, Brigitte Fassbender. It's a, it's, and Hans Hotter is the Sprecher again. Hans Hotter was Sprecking his little, little, little head off. So this is a great girl leader, very well recorded. And it's, it's one of the best. I mean, you got to have it. You do. You know, along with his Das Klagende lead, that was, those were like the two big choral works that Shai did in Berlin that you really need to have. However, the classic, the reference recording, and I know some of you are going to wish I found some hidden, unknown, you know, secret recording that's really the best. But, you know, Girl Leader isn't that kind of piece. Like I said, it's like the Titanic. It's like Mount Everest. There, there, there can only be one. There, there's, it, it's not the kind of work that you can, you can hide, <laughs> that you can slip under the door, some sneaky little performance in some out of the way provincial backwater. No, you need the resources of one of the world-class orchestras with a world-class roster of singers where money is no object and a major label was going to record them. And so here we have Azawa. You knew it was coming and here it is. This is, first of all, it's one of the best things Azawa ever did. It has the best cast. It's got James McCracken as Valdemar, Jesse Norman, the best ever Tova. She really is. She's just great. Absolutely great. Just mindless and gorgeous. That's all I want in Tova is mindless gorgiosity. And Tatiana Troyanos, an incredible wood dove. And let's see who we have is who's the peasant? Who cares? That's David Arnold and Kim Swan, Kim something. Is Klaus the Fool, Klim Scoun, I don't know, Swan, Scrone, Throne, I don't know. And Werner Klemperer is the Sprecher. We have Colonel Klink as the Sprecher. He was a great Sprecher. I had to talk with him about him being the Sprecher. He did an excellent job. And I saw this performance. That's why I like it. I was there. And my cough is on this recording. Right after measure 273 in the first movement, Valdemar is going, ah, oh, du liebste, blab, blab, you hear, <coughs> that was me. 
So there you go. It was a live recording. And my cough has been preserved for all posterity in this performance of Girl Leader. And there aren't many coughs, a very faint little cough. They didn't, they didn't capture my cough in quite the fidelity that I think it deserved to be preserved. Preserved in, I mean, you know, you could, if we had surround sound, then you could hear my cough coming from behind you. But it's just stereo. So my, my cough is, is rather excessively integrated into the welter of sound. But what the hell? You take what you can get. Azawa's Girl Eater is still the best. It is quick. It is fantastically played. It is fabulously sung by the soloists. Some people have said, oh, well, the choruses aren't as good or in some other performances. Who gives a damn about the choruses in Girl Eater? I mean, really. You know, you have the royal hunt. The men just get up and they go, hi ho hi ho hi hi You know, they scream and yell. And then the whole business about the sun coming up at the end is such a muddle anyway. As long as everyone's yelling enough, you can't understand and a single word of it. It makes no difference. It was a great performance. They caught it on the for the microphones and they've issued it and it's been the best girl leader ever since. And that is that. So that is the story of Girl Leader. Keep on listening, folks, and good luck with this behemoth. I wish you all the best. Take care.